just an intro slide. The, uh, you know, VOP stands for Verona, Oakmont, Penn Hills, and Plum. Um, those are the four uh, communities or municipalities that the uh, that this this proposed trail would would go through. Um, it would uh, connect the Allegheny River um, by the public docks and Steel City Rowing Club in Verona with Boyce Park. Um, so I will give a little bit of, here. Oh, here's um, this is a map of the uh, just the general. It shows the the proposed trail route. Um, we don't we don't have anything totally concrete yet, but this this is the 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 final alignment that was uh, developed from the feasibility study. So I'll get to more more on that in, in a little bit, but I just wanted to give everyone a quick overview of where we're talking about um, some of the potential um, trailheads or access points and where it's, you know, kind of the, the, the parks and the areas that it's gonna, um, it would run adjacent to according to the current, current uh, feasibility study plans. Um, so to give a little bit of background about the project, um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of past efforts. You know, I'm, I'm fairly new to Verona. I've, I've lived here a little over four years um, now, but uh, when I first got involved with this, I, I knew that there were several other folks on the project that have been involved with some form of trail uh, or bike and pedestrian advocacy in the area for, for a while. So, um, you know, among the member communities, uh, Verona had a, there was a proposal done by some CMU grad students for kind of a community engagement plan in 2016 that, that touched on, um, you know, suggested some sort of riverfront trail or, or trail connecting the nearby communities. Oakmont's uh, 2011 comprehensive plan um, talked about connecting dark hollow woods. And um, it, it may be hard to see on this map, but up here, dark hollow park and the Allegheny River, which, which is what, you know, what our current project seeks to do. Um, that comp plan also talked about trails along Plum Creek, which, um, you know, a big part of this is the Plum Creek watershed. Um, you know, a lot of the trail would, would follow closely along Plum Creek. Um, Penn Hills in their 1996 comprehensive plan, um, it suggested a feasibility study similar to the one we, we just, um, uh, it, su it suggested a feasibility study for a similar trail along the Allegheny River, um, farther south of Verona, um, leading towards, uh, you know, Highland Park and, and parts of the city of Pittsburgh. So in 2003, Penn Hills did do a feasibility study for uh, uh, a trail along Allegheny River Boulevard corridor uh, along the riverfront, <clears throat> um, which is not part of our current project uh, goals, but you know that's the sort of thing that could be a potential connector in the future. Um, the and then in Plum, they did a 20, 2012 comprehensive plan that identifies um, Plum Creek. Uh, trail as a goal. Um, and then the big one is, is the Allegheny Places Comprehensive Plan. And that's, that's basically the county's uh, comprehensive plan that um, was established in, in December of 2008, I believe, that um, identifies a lot of really good um, outdoor um, bike and pedestrian infrastructure, uh, outdoor, outdoor um, recreational activities and, and infrastructure. And um, it's really, it really shows a great, you know, bike and ped transportation network um, for the county. And, and that's something to check out if, if you're interested in any of this. Um, when I really dug into that, I, I was impressed with, with what all was in there. Um, so that brings us to, to 2018 when the, the, the VOP steering committee was formed kind of informally um, we had a couple members basically from each municipality. Um, I was brought on, uh, to some of the initial meetings by, uh, Mike Forbeck, who's also currently a councilman, councilman here in Verona. Um, he had been active in some of these past projects. And, um, so he and I are the, are kind of the representatives from Verona. Um, 
Tom Bland and Tony Lascola in, in Oakmont, um, uh, Chris Blackwell in, in, in Penn Hills, who he's actually uh, the planning director for Penn Hills. Um, the rest of us are kind of kind of more in volunteer roles. And then um, David uh, Sobosley from Plum, he's, he's the assistant borough manager there. And and um, one of uh, one of his uh, colleagues also joined uh, in the steering committee, um, and then we had support from um, from Dollar Cravata from uh, Allegheny County Executive Rich Fitzgerald's office, and um, and Ann Ogorek from the Allegheny County Department of Economic Development. They were supportive of of kind of the things that we were looking to do. And um, as, as it tied into the, the Allegheny County Comprehensive Plan. So the thing that, that, that the committee kind of decided or the group of people at the time decided is that we wanted to develop this trail from the river to Boyce Park. Um, it, it was viewed favorably because it's, it's a multi-municipal effort. Um, we had support of, of our borough councils or, or municipal councils in all four communities. Um, you know the grant, uh, the the uh, the people that that issue and decide on these grants a lot of times like to see that inter municipal cooperation. So this th that was really helping us, and um, really the goal was um, not just to develop a trail, but to connect these communities, connect uh, the business districts, the parks, um, connect people to to different schools, to other recreational opportunities, whether it's the river, whether, whether it's, um, you know, the pool at Boyce Park, the, uh, the ball fields, there's, there's an endless amount of opportunities at Boyce Park. And, um, and even in the, in the communities in between, there's a lot of smaller parks, um, excuse me, a lot of things to do um, in this route. And there's a lot of people that live, you know, within a pretty close distance. So, um, like I said, we had support from Allegheny County. Um, it, it, it was kind of in conjunction with, um, or, or it aligned with the Live Well Allegheny uh, program, the Active Allegheny program, and the, uh, the Allegheny Places comprehensive plan that I mentioned. Um, we had some representatives that came to some initial meetings from the Allegheny County Parks Foundation. Um, uh, and again, staff from Plum and Penn Hills, uh, Friends of the Riverfront, and the Allegheny Green Web were all. Um, you know, very supportive of what we were doing and as it, it kind of fit in with, with their goals and what they were trying to do, um, you know, maybe on a bigger scale within the region. So our first, the first major milestone that we had as a group um, was that we applied for an active Allegheny grant in 2018, in April of 2018. And um, this is a grant runs through Allegheny County, um, economic development. Um, we received the grant in late 2018. Um, it was it was funded by it was, well, Verona, we had to pick one one municipality to be the, the uh, kind of the sponsor and that 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 was Verona. Um, we kind of ran the, the grant application through Verona and and, and the, the subsequent um, contract with the consultant. So the grant was uh, was was funded by the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County uh, in cooperation with the Allegheny County Health Department and the Richard King Mellon Foundation. So we were very appreciative of that, of that first grant. Um, the goal was to complete a feasibility study um, of the trail, the entire length of the trail and, and identify um, you know, possible funding for future you know, design efforts and construction efforts and just kind of identify different possible alignments of the trail or, or paths that the trail could take. Um, so we started the RFP process or request for proposal process in February of 2019. Um, and then we got the feasibility study kicked off in uh, spring of 2019. Um, so um, we hired a consultant. Um, we, we had a few good ones to choose from. We had some great proposals. We ended up hiring um, a Pittsburgh-based firm called en Environmental Planning and Design. And uh, they had HF Lens as a subconsultant to help with some of the survey and, and engineering work. Um, 
but again, the goals of the study were to identify the potential trail alignments, uh, gather feedback from the public, from elected officials and other stakeholders, and then identify the next steps in, in the project or in the overall process and what funding would be available for those next steps. Um, so we, we, we kind of, you know, honed in on what our steering committee would be. And it was predominantly the, uh, the, the folks from the four different municipalities or, you know, from each community representing. And then, um, you know, we, we kind of had a couple other people that I mentioned above, you know, guiding us or stepping in as necessary, but we had four steering committee meetings between June of 2019 and January of 2020 with environmental planning and design or, or EPD. Um, and that kind of helped us fine tune, you know, what they were doing, making sure that they were on track and per also preparing for the public meetings, which were a big, big part of this. So the first public meeting we had was on um, July 23rd, 2019. And that was held at the Penn Hills government building. It's a very big newer building that, um, had plenty of space for, you know, in case we had a big turnout. And we did, we had uh, well over 50 people, um, a lot of enthusiastic um, support. And we presented, um, <clears throat> there was, a, there was a, a PowerPoint presentation as well as um, uh, some, some poster, poster board around the room. So people could, could view the three, three potential trail alignments that were identified by, by EPD. So we got a lot of great feedback from that, um, built up a lot of enthusiasm, got some good press. Um, after that, we, we, start, we kicked off an online survey. So we had some detailed questions, um, really helped fine tune the final alignment selection and figure out what kinds of things we need to be considering for the, you know, the remainder of the, uh, the feasibility study and, and, and whether it's you know, just get a pulse of, of the community and what what the community wanted to see out of this project. So we held a second public meeting a few months later and on um, uh, October 17th, 2019, that was again at the Penn Hills government building. We had around about 40 people, a little bit less, but still a good turnout. And we presented our final proposed align trail alignment along with um, some of the cost estimates. So up here, you can see that this is a screenshot from the, uh, the feasibility study um, just showing kind of where the, the trail alignments, it might be a little bit hard to see, but there's different color coded sections here showing um, some of the different possible paths that we thought the trail, uh, the EPD thought the trail could, could take. Um, so the, the biggest variation was, was kind of in the Oakmont, um, leaving Verona area, and then um, getting more into Plum, uh, just past the North Bessemer area in, in uh, Penn Hills uh, near Milltown Road. And so they, they did a good, I don't show the whole thing here, but they did a good job of breaking down, um, you know, some of the different factors to consider and, and rating different elements. So um, the, the result of the feasibility study and the recommendations, that's um, the trail alignment that you see here is basically what, what came out of that. Um, I think we, we had good, Good public feedback, and I think the committee was was pretty much in agreement on kind of the how we wanted to to leave this. And, and this isn't certainly isn't a, a final final route, but it gives us a good framework for going forward with um, with detailed design. So this this trail alignment's broken into segments. Um, uh, uh, there's five segments. There's one A, one B, two, three, and four. Um, starting, you know, 1A and 1B are in, in um, Verona and Oakmont going into Creekside Park and, and then 2, 3, and 4 follow. And um, I won't get in too much into the details there, but um, basically uh, they identify different elements of the process of designing the actual construction of trail into short, mid, and long-term goals. You know, like what, what's the low-hanging fruit? what's gonna take a little bit longer and what's gonna take a really long time. Um, particularly for segments two, three, and four, there, there, there were some ownership and title search issues that were identified that you know, meant that these are gonna be kind of low, longer, um, longer term goals. And they're, they, they're not really gonna be the low hanging fruit. Um, 
but we could start maybe on some of the um, some of the, the the land and and ownership issues early on. Um, one of the recommendations they had was to update local municipal plans, such as maps, comprehensive plans, and zoning ordinances, to reflect this proposed trail, so that um, it can be incorporated in any future development. Um, I think we still are working on that, um, <clears throat> but I think that's a good recommendation. Um, and then they had a recommendation about the organization to carry out the project, um, transitioning the steering committee to a long-term entity. Um, and then they presented some cost estimates for development and construction and identified some future grant opportunities, which, which was really helpful. Um, so this again is, is, this, uh, is the, uh, the map of, of the final alignment. Now this this website link above, I think I think Annie's probably going to send it out to everyone later. But this shows an interactive map, a version of this map that you can look at on the web um, if you want to look in more detail. Here's here's just a couple of conceptual renderings that the the consultants put together. This is Creekside Park in Oakmont, um, just showing kind of how the trail might fit in um, according to the 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 alignment that that was chosen. Um, just to give people a sense of that. And then here's another, um, I don't know why this didn't show up better, but um, a conceptual rendering of, of Allegheny River Boulevard in, in Verona, um, potentially having a cycle track or, or, protect, or bike lane um, on, on the side of, of ARB across from the get-go there. So um, those are just, just some suggestions they had. Um, so the, the current project status is um, we've actually applied for a second active Allegheny grant to cover um, the detailed design and engineering for segments 1A and 1B, which would basically get us from uh, the Steel City Rowing Club in Verona on the Allegheny River um, through Verona into Oakmont and to cre around about Creekside Park in Oakmont. Um, Oakmont has a lot of other trail projects that they're undertaking near in and around Creekside Park. So, um, you know, we're hoping that it'll mesh, uh, you know, line up with those. Um, we applied for this grant in November of 2020. Um, we're pretty close to probably having some kind of public announcement about that, but still um, waiting for, for final word. Um, but in the meantime, we've, we've met, we've also met with PennDOT. Um, the, the District 11 bike ped coordinator, who's been really helpful in just helping us understand what PennDOT's involvement and process would be, given that um, the, the trail would be potentially going along Allegheny River Boulevard between Oakmont and Verona, and just trying to get an idea of what we need to expect there and, and anticipate. Um, GIS work, um, we do have this map that the consultants put together, but um, on the screen here is, is kind of an index um, Rick Duncan is, is, a, is a Penn Hills resident who's been active in a lot of different um, groups. And he's, he's, uh, he's helping us out with his background in GIS in developing updated maps uh, as, as things may change just for grant and um, RFP purposes so that we can, we can have something pretty to share with everyone. Um, and we're also, we've been partnering with Friends of the Riverfront um, their director of trail development is, is Courtney uh, Maronich Vita. She, uh, she's an Oakmont resident. Um, she's been very active in trail projects around the region. Um, and she is, is, is really knowledgeable with this stuff. So she's been sitting in our, our trail committee, our, our VOP committee meetings, and she's, um, hope, we're hoping to have her help us with writing an RFP for the next, uh, this next stage of, um, of, of getting a consultant to do, to do a detailed design of segments 1A and 1B. Um, we can, we're also looking at possibly getting a DCNR partnership grant that would allow us to, um, to utilize, you know, Friends of the Riverfront for, for further assistance in, uh, as the trail project goes on, because we don't, we currently don't have a nonprofit status. Um, we're still trying to figure out, you know, what the committee is going to look like or develop into long term. Um, but for now, that's that's kind of how we're we're working things. It's it's a little bit ad hoc or or informal, but it's it's worked so far. 
Um, and then, you know, next we're going to be working on that, that RFP for detailed design of segments 1A and 1B. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's kind of where we're at. I talked a little bit about uh, the future efforts or tasks that we have ahead, but um, we're going to try to hopefully get that, that grant and we'll, we'll look to, to get proposals for the design, um, you know, issue a consultant contract. And then um, once we have that design, we'll, we'll, we'll have documents that'll hopefully be ready for construction. And then we, you know, we can look to further, uh, further that with, with additional grants. Um, and in the meantime, we're also talking about looking, looking at some of that longer term right away and property tasks for the later segments, um, just because they may take some time and uh, we'll kind of need that to happen before we can get into detailed design of the trail. Um, so there's, there's gonna be a lot more future grants and, and funding that we'll look towards. Um, but right now that's, that's kind of where we're at. Now, this, is, um, this screenshot here is from Google Earth. Um, it's, it's showing the, the railroad tracks in that North Bessemer area of Penn Hills near Milltown and Leechburg Roads. Um, there's actually, it's really hard to see, but under here, there's, there's a little tunnel for Plum Creek to go under this, this big uh, railroad um, bridge. And then there's also another old abandoned tunnel that I, I think may have been Pennsylvania Railroad property. It was identified during the, uh, during the feasibility study and it, um, it seems like it's really cool. It, it, you know, we don't, we still need to do some research on whether that is something we could utilize. Um, but it's, it's a pretty neat area if you're, if you're familiar, if you've ever been down this way. Um, so it's, this is kind of a bird's eye view of that. So, um, that's all I have. I hope, um, I covered everything and I hope I allowed enough time for some questions. So I'll, I'll open it up for any questions that people have. Hey, Dave, this is, I have a quick question on, um, as you probably know, there's, um, and Penn Hills has done a good job on Plum Creek on their side of, um, by the park down there doing uh, the, um, not weed eradication. And there's a lot on the, like where the trail would go through, I think would be a lot of knotweed on the other side. And is there any plans to maybe before we even start like getting rid of that knotweed and dealing, doing similar? And I know Rick's been really involved in the Penn Hill side on that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we haven't talked um, in much detail about that. I mean, that, that issue hasn't come up in particular in our meetings. Um, I think, um, I think that's probably something that'll come up once we start to look. You'd be talking, is this near Creekside Park or more near the Penn Hills? It's, yeah, from Park. Creekside Park, where you kind of get into the um, Dark Hollow Trail there. Um, there's just a ton of knotweed um, that I think it would help out. Like if Penn Hills has done their done due diligence on the other side, and I just feel like if we get that out of there, then it won't, it'll help <laughs> Penn Hills out of, as well because it's not weeds going to get across that creek again anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's something we would probably look at once we get into more of the details on where exactly the trail would go. Um, I think right now we kind of have a like a corridor identified, but um, that's kind of the next step that we're looking at, at least for the first two segments is, is kind of the detail. Um, the detail design where you're, you're really honing in on exactly where the trail is going to go, how wide it's going to be, um, how it's going to be constructed, that sort of thing. So, so we'll probably, I mean, I can make a note of that, but we'll probably look at that sort of thing. Um, once we move on to that, that next section, um, in, in the design phase. Any other questions? When you say a uh, tunnel under the tracks there, is it a walking tunnel or a culvert? It, um, 
so I haven't, I haven't been in it. I've only seen some, some kind of rough pictures, but it, it's an old abandoned railroad tunnel. Okay. Um, so it, it has not, I mean, it's not open to the public currently. Um, the ownership is kind of murky, you know, it's listed as Pennsylvania railroad, but who, you know, there's some questions about who, who currently holds those rights. Um, so again, it's, it's nothing that's been acquired or finalized as, as, uh, as a definite, but it's something that um, the consultants identified as, you know, in looking at where the trail might go, it's a possible path. If it could be acquired and it would probably require some, some rehabilitation, like a lot of railroad tunnels or mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing would have been, uh, you know, uh, renovated to, to be, a pro, you know, become appropriate for bike and pedestrian use. So right now it's, I would say it's not walkable at all. Um, I'm not even sure how you would access it, given that it's it's kind of tucked away there, and you'd have to probably cross private property at this point to get to mm -hmm. it. But um, but yeah, it's something that that we'd hope maybe could be turned into a, a you know a walkable, bikeable tunnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at that area on Google Satellite View. And it's, it's hard to find a little, it. it. It well, I just went by a street intersection, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what time of year. Like, what is that dark, vaguely triangular thing? Um, I'm not sure. That might be. Is it like a wetland or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that the uh, Plum Creek runs near near there. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of runs along, like it would, it, it kind of parallels Plum Creek. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, and it is, a, it is a pretty low, low line area. Um, like I said, I've only driven by on Leechburg Road and seen it, you know, when the leaves, before the leaves pop out, Mm -hmm. um on the trees you, you can actually get a decent look down down here below out of the screen on um on leechburg road but um it's really hard to see when when you're out there it's it's really hard to access so mm -hmm. um we were kind of going off some old photos if you, if you google it you you um you'd probably find some photos some old photos as well but um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a hidden thing, what did, which uh, what we, we thought was pretty, pretty neat about it. Um, you know, if, if it pans out, it, it could be a pretty, a pretty nice, um, you know, kind of a keystone addition to the trail. Yeah. Excuse me, through Oakmont. <laughs> It looked like you were going to use a bike lane. Is the majority of this trail going to be along public roadway, or is it just um, sections? Yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good question. I don't. So there's there's a good chunk that's actually going to be off off road. Um, the initial the initial portion of the trail through Verona and Oakmont, at least until it gets to Creekside Park, um, <clears throat> just because it's 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 so dense of an area. And we, we, we had trouble finding an alternate route. Um, it's going to probably have to follow mostly roads um, as either a bike lane or a separated uh, cycle track or, you know, there's various ways we could do that. Uh, once you get to Creekside Park, it's, it'll be off road um, pretty much for most of the rest of the way to Plum or uh, to, to Boyce Park. So um, that was one of the things that came up in the feasibility study. There were multiple um, options presented, and you know, one of them was was more heavy on on roads. It was a more of a direct route to, to Boyce Park. But I think the general consensus with the public and with the committee was that you know there was there was this potential for a long winding uh, kind of a curved uh, out of the way path. You know, getting over to Plum to Plum Borough and to Boyce Park from, from Penn Hills and Oakmont that uh, was a bit longer, but it would be relatively flat uh, and it would, it would be off-road on, on a good chunk on, on abandoned rail right away. 
potentially. So, um, yeah, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I, I can look that up and get back to you on, on, we had a percentage breakdown or a number of miles breakdown between on-road and off-road, but, but this, this alignment that we chose is actually, um, I think a good, a very good chunk of it is off-road, fortunately. I was wondering because on roads, not going to be very pedestrian friendly or walker friendly, but if you have a large part of it where they can get on and off in, you know, parking areas or parks or whatever, then I guess, you know, just some will be a little more heavily used by someone who's going to push a baby carriage, walk a dog versus somebody who's going to ride a bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a consideration we've talked about. Um, that's something that when we get into the detail design, and this will come up in the first. He's frozen. I think you froze, Dave. He probably can't hear you tell him no. that separated there trail that, that would accommodate both pedestrians and and cyclists um or or you know maybe if there's a sidewalk in the area we could you know divert pedestrian traffic to the sidewalk and keep cyclists on the street so that's that's something we'll we'll take public input on and try to weigh um you know the costs and challenges against what what's feasible I know there's a couple of questions in the chat. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, I missed. Uh, sorry, I have it. I have it so I can see people, but I don't. I don't know what happened to my chat box. I could read them out loud. I mean, one of them was my. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Michael said, uh, "Is there a proposed bridge between Dark Hollow Park and Colorado Drive in Penn Hills?" Dark Hollow Park. Um, I don't. No, I'm trying to picture. I know that there is a proposed bridge um, that Oakmont's working on between uh, Creekside Park and um, it would be Plum Street or Hunter Road. I think it's right where Plum Street turns into Hunter Road. Um, but between, where was that again? Between Colorado and Dark Hollow Park. I think the, oh. between Penn Hills Park and Dark Hollow, the, like over the creek there is my, what I think I'm guessing. Yeah, so um, let me see if I remember. I don't know if it goes in enough detail on this map. Um, the, web, the web map might have a little bit more detail. I think there is. Uh, identified another crossing in that area if i remember correctly but it would it would probably come in the in the segment two which um we haven't even really dug into as far as the detail so um yeah i, th I think it probably would cross over from colorado somewhere near colorado over to dark hollow woods uh i believe Were there others in the other questions in the chat, Annie? Um, I know I was wondering about um, kind of how you like navigated partnership between the four municipalities. Was that like an established partnership or is it a new thing with the VOP trail? Um, yeah, that's a good question. It was a little bit of both. Um, I think, you know, because there had been some of the, some of the people on the committee now, they had, um, kind of known each other or worked on past efforts for trail trail projects like this or different you know oakmont was doing their thing in creekside park but you know tom knew uh mike from past you know projects and same with chris and penn hills and so it was a little bit of past you know connections but um i don't think that any of the municipalities have been involved in something like this with all four working together and like all aligned and, and in agreement. So it was kind of a new chartering, you know, charting new waters there, but um, 
yeah, it, it, you know, it took a little while to get all the, the councils to approve things, but I think everyone's been very supportive and enthusiastic of it. Um, we haven't, we haven't heard a lot of negative feedback at all. The, the really the biggest negative feedback was from uh, the railroad, which is not surprising for anyone that's worked on trail projects with railroads. <laughs> So any others? I know we're probably a little past the uh, time frame here, so I apologize. Yeah, I have a question. Um, did is the length um thirteen some miles? Is that what it is? Or I I believe so. Yeah, I I should have. I spent a lot of time putting all all that I could into the, making sure I covered everything, but I totally forgot the length of the trail, um, which is kind of important. But I, thirteen <laughs> miles sounds right. Okay. Cool. Cool. I thought maybe I missed it, so cool. No, I, I forgot to include that. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, no worries. Um, I was also curious how the owners of the properties have been responding as you've been reaching out. So we, we haven't done a whole lot of outreach yet. Um, that's something we're gonna be getting into shortly. Um, I mean, we talked to some property owners during the, the public meetings. Um, like I said, the biggest one was the railroad, the Allegheny Valley Railroad. And um, they they didn't really want the trail on their property. So we, we kind of avoided that um, during the feasibility study um, at their request. So um, that's why part of the reason why it, it's following the route it does through Oakmont and Verona. Um, there were maybe some property owners, I think in Penn Hills or Plum, that maybe had a little bit of concern, but there nothing major. Um, that was, more, you know, things were kind of more general then. So we're, once we get into, I think what, what Rick Duncan's gonna help us with, um, or I think he's already even started is with his GIS uh, mapping to, to really identify the parcels along the corridor that we wanna hone in on so that, um, we can start identifying that, making a list, and then maybe start talking to some of the, excuse me, property owners. Um, this is a little bit new for, for a lot of us. Like uh, we're, we're leaning on some, some people from other trail groups, uh, friends of the riverfront, that sort of thing on, on, hey, what's the best practice here in approaching some of these delicate situations? Um, you know, some of it's chicken and egg. So, um, I'm sure there will be more uh, property issues that come about uh, along the way. Um, hopefully not too many, but yeah, that's what we've seen so far. Cool, thanks. This is exciting. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, um, and, and I, you know, there was a lot of excitement for the, for the public meetings we had. And then since then there, you know, people pop up and say, hey, is this still going on? What's, what's happening? And, um, we're trying to keep the momentum going, but it's also tough with, um, you know, we're being, a, we're an all volunteer committee basically. Um, and just the grant, the grant process, COVID set us back a lot with the, with the, uh, the feasibility study, ending the feasibility study and the next steps moving on. Um, so it, it, the wheels of government turn slowly, but I, I think, um, you know, we're making progress and hopefully people will stick with us and we can keep the momentum up so that the more excitement we have, I think the better. It's just tough to build excitement when we don't have a whole lot to show for it quite yet. Cool. Um, thank you. Thanks so much, Dave, for um, talking. And I just realized that there's like three Daves on this call, which is very funny, um, considering how many people there are. Uh, but anyway, uh, now we can do like breakout groups for a couple of minutes just so we can get each, get to know each other more intimately. Um, and I see there are some like new names here. If anyone wants to introduce themselves, I know Randy, uh, Andrea and Michael are all new. Hi, I'm Randy. I live in Penn Hills. I um, came. I think Dave might have invited me to because of because of the trail stuff. Um, I've been involved with that somewhat. I also my day job is I work for the Sierra Club. Okay. 
We lost somebody. <laughs> I'm gonna send folks, uh, there's only like two breakout groups today, so I'm just gonna send you off. Um, Marin and Rhea, I was gonna ask you where you wanted to go. I actually have to head out to uh, another uh, Zoom shortly, so I probably shouldn't take up with somebody. Um, sorry to abandon you. We'll have to go wherever then. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna send you to landscaping and I'm gonna go there too. Okay, cool. Have fun in land. Well, send me there and I'll say bye to everybody. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Hello. Okay. Hello. I am adding other folks to this group as well. Oh, can I still do that? Sorry, uh, I feel like I've been using Zoom for so long and yet I still struggle. Okay. Okay, cool. This is the landscaping group. Um, I feel like I like to have these like smaller group sessions, especially like um, Dave Mueller. I know you've been you've been like attending these for a while. Um, I was wondering like how. Or I guess we could all introduce ourselves first. <laughs> but I was particularly uh, wondering how you heard about us. Uh, I don't know how I heard about you. I think it just came across my email because I've been in various groups lately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't think the first one now right off hand, but it was interesting. And then this, I ride bicycle quite a bit. I ride a bicycle quite a bit. So a new trail, especially sort of a urban, suburban type trail, it was interesting to me. So I wanted to see what it was about. What community do you live in? Pardon? Do you, do you live um, in a community that the VOP would affect? No, I don't. And my daughter's just moving out of the community that the VOP would affect. Uh, but I do go around and ride different trails. Yeah. So, and they said, one of the questions I saw in the chat is why would the railroads be, you know, against anything? Railroads are very protective of their property, mm -hmm. mainly due to liability. Uh, a train going past you can kick something up and hit you in the head and you're done. It's not something that hasn't happened before to them. Uh, also, they're always concerned people on the tracks or throwing things on the tracks or throwing the tra trains. All these things have happened to them over the years. So anytime you're doing a railroad, they're very particular about their property. They even have their own police force. So you should not ever tra trespass on a railroad property. Uh, it's just it's just a fact with every railroad I've ever seen. Yeah, it's the classic case of somebody's walking across the tracks and they get their foot stuck, and then they lose a the leg and the railroad takes. Sliced. Yeah. So. Or somebody jumps on a uh, car transport and smashes all the windows of the new cars in the top car transport. Because it slows it's down. Very rude. A lot of rude people in life. <laughs> I mean, it's that happens. That's not an uncommon thing to happen. Or they paint alongside of a car. Well, yeah. that's art. <laughs> if it's yes, nicely I've done. I've seen it. It does. I've seen it in tunnels too, and it does look like art. But you know, if you own the tunnel, it's uh, vandalism. So. Mm -hmm. And there's all different type points of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love going through on the train in European cities and just at the edges of the town, there's always great graffiti. Yeah. If you were allowed to walk on railroad tracks over towards the Sharpsburg area, there's a long concrete wall keeping mm -hmm. the track in the river. It's actually beautiful. Mm -hmm. it, you know, in essence, it's vandalism. <laughs> so, unless you're Banksy, in which case it's really valuable. 
Pardon? Unless you're Banksy, in case it's really, in which case it's really valuable. So, I don't know exactly what are we going to do with, what are we, for this landscape, and this is new to me. I'm, I'm interested in who David and Beth are. Did I, do I know who David and uh, Beth are? It might be a relation to Annie. They're my parents. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see the last name now. No, yeah. yeah. I think my, my mom helped um, assemble things. They missed that part oh, of it. Excellent. But I showed a photo. Excellent. Yeah. Of everybody. Oh, cool. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Thanks that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah, have like, to bounce. Yeah, okay. I have to bounce to another meeting, but I thought I'd say hi. And because uh, they're Dave and, David and Beth, I haven't met. Um, and uh, say that I'm a planetary scientist turned environmental educator and activist working in climate and air quality and plastics and justice and food and uh, something that might interest folks is that I uh, organize and host a monthly environmental education event now in its 10th year uh, called Sustainability Salon and normally it's a public conference, but it's been on Zoom for the last year. And if anybody might be interested in that, I will put uh, instructions on how to connect um, in the chat, which is to email me a salon in the subject line. And then I will apologize because we'll have to go to another meeting. I think I'm going to pull everybody back, but uh, Rhea, I was wondering if you could like. Maybe like talk about, I don't know if you did at the meeting, but talk about the, the tree partnership that, or the partnership with Tree Pittsburgh that you figured out um, when I pull everybody out back. Oh, yeah. That sound okay? Okay. Cool. Um, sure. There's also one about native, native garden. Should I go ahead and talk about that too? A subcommittee of food systems? Yeah, let's do it. I want to hear it. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to pull everyone out. How do I do that? Do you think they were deep in conversation? <laughs> Hi, man. Thanks for coming. Bye. everybody i hope you had a full conversation um does anyone want to report out i know we're at eight so if anyone has to hi randy thanks for coming mm -hmm. thanks randy good to see you you too okay randy. Randy, can you tell us about oh unless you want to go sorry dave i didn't want to david i didn't want to interrupt you oh no i just was saying bye to randy oh, okay <laughs> Randy's with Sierra Club. Oh, I guess he said that. But mm -hmm. yeah. we actually all live in Verona. Nice. Randy lives in Verona. Yeah, yeah. Ray, do you want to talk about um, what the like extra participants and stuff? The extra participants. Oh, oh. Um, the yeah. So we actually received forty nine applicants for um, people that were interested in participating in the Reimagined Food Systems Program. And one of the questions that I asked on the application was, if you are not chosen to receive a food garden, would you be interested in receiving a free tree or a free um, small native pollinator garden? And 11 people um, that applied had indicated they'd be interested in a free tree. So I, um, through Clara Katang Katango, um, I met her through one of these programs. Um, 
she was able to connect me to Aaron Gone of Tree Pittsburgh. And so um, I've connected those people and hopefully they have all gone forward with the tree adoption program. So that would be cool. And then also of the 49 applicants, 33 people indicated that they were interested in a, a small pollinator garden. Um, so I have decided to create like a subcommittee of food systems. And um, I was working, playing around with names and uh, Native Ur Urban Garden Stewardship Project came to me and it's N-U-G-S, it's NUGS. I just thought it was really cute. Native Urban Garden Stewardship Project. Um, and so I'm ordering some Pennsylvania ecotype native uh, seeds from Ernst Seeds. I'm going to germinate them at our house. Uh, hopefully they'll be successful. If they are, then I'm going to gather volunteers, gather some free materials like mulch. Um, we have someone that even has a tiller that's willing to let us use it. Um, we have some cool resources that we could um, uh, perhaps provide some small pollinator gardens for some of the people that are in our Wilmerding Wall and Easton Keysport area. Um, if the seedlings aren't so successful, uh, the germination, then I don't know, maybe we'll just hand out a few plants. But um, regardless, I'm interested in starting this uh, project and I'll be moving forward with it. And I hope that some others would be interested in joining the subcommittee with me. Um, if so, let me know. I will send out an update and we'll, I don't know, we'll start a meeting, decide where we want this to go and see how it works. That's so exciting. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'm excited about it too. Thanks. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to send like a follow up email tomorrow with this recording and um, some other things. And I can include, if it's okay, your email to folks yeah. who want to be interested. Reimagine food systems at gmail.com. One word reimagine food systems, plural, at gmail.com. Okay, great. Thank you everyone uh, for coming and uh, special thanks to David for uh, presenting to us. I feel like I learned a lot. Um, do, do you want to talk about the fundraiser? The uh, fundraiser. Oh, the, the music one. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have a fundraiser. I think I mentioned it at the top, but um, oh, sorry. Yeah. no, it's okay. I'm going to everyone will be hearing from me a lot about this fundraiser. Um, yeah, we're going to have a couple of folk bands um, play music and um, try to collect donations for uh, TICWAC as a whole, but in particular um, to fund the gardening program, Reimagine Food Systems. So yeah, I, I think it's going to be called Get Down for Gardens. So <laughs> cool. yeah. Um, the one, the name is Sweet Potato and the Hot Damn Yam Band. I thought that was so clever. And Colin and the Crows, yeah. I've heard Colin and the Crows, I love them. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's all virtual, so. Yeah, I love it. And you said you'll also have a DJ set at the end? Yeah, um, Ron Mist. It's like my friend's friend, but uh, yeah. Or my friend's roommate, John Nigra, who uh, comes to these meetings occasionally. It's like his- yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, cool. Yeah, it should be fun and exciting and hopefully, you know, we'll get some funding and yeah. Thanks for setting that up. It sounds amazing. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I won't be able to attend, but have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, well, okay, great. Uh, thanks everyone for coming and uh, yeah. yeah Thank thanks you. For Thank you, Dave. For allowing me to come and give the presentation. I appreciate it. Very informational. It's good to see how this lays out you know how to go about different steps so yeah. Dave do you need anything else from communities um that it's passing through at this point um I don't think so I think one of the things we talked about at, at a, a recent steering committee meeting a few months ago was just kind of connecting with other uh well, I mean I guess this is something but connecting with other groups that might be you know, supportive or aligned with what we're doing. Um, so then when, you know, when you reached out about this meeting, that was kind of like, oh, this, you know, I, I told the rest of the committee and they're like, yeah, that's, that's a good, a good step. So, you know, um, I know Randy's not here, but, you know, 
talking with Randy and the, and the Sierra club or, you know, any other groups that, you know, just, just getting the word out, just, um, telling people about it. Um, like I said, right now we're kind of in this lull where we're, we're going to have some more activity. We're going to have more public meetings, hopefully in the next, you know, several months to a year. But in the meantime, it's like, you know, there's only so much, uh, we can do other than, you know, just spread the word. And, and I'd be glad to give this kind of presentation to other groups um, or, you know, whatever we, we can do to, to get the word out. Um, I think as we get farther along, there'll be a lot more for, for people in those communities to do when we have um, like specific, like if we have a public meeting for the first, the first two segments, you know, we'll really want to rally the, the public support at those meetings and that sort of thing. So that's something that, we'll try to spread the word on. So cool. yeah, that, that's about it for now. Cool. Do you, um, do you all do like booths or anything in communities, like community events? Um, we had, what was, shoot, what was the like, one thing? Vop I'm sure would be invited to participate in Verona farmer's market. Um, and I didn't know what other events were like yeah. they could pick a day and there was, um, have an info booth. I feel like there was an event last spring that we were going to do that got canceled and i can't remember what it was right now are you talking about um the sustain um the earth day event that i was trying to put together for verona that might have been it <laughs> um yeah covid ha COVID happened so we it's you know it, it kind of put a damper on some of those things but i think as we're you know looking to come out of this and with summer ahead there might be more opportunities but um yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, honestly, if between the committee members, if we have the time to do every farmer's market, but um, I mean, we could certainly put together maybe some literature if people wanted to hand out or share with other groups or other events, or like I said, I'm happy to give this presentation. You know, when I put it together, I thought, oh, maybe we could use this in the future with other groups too. So if you, if you would like to put something in a brochure, then we could just in Verona, we could put it out with either the parks and rec booth or our sustainability booths. Um, and then as far as Oakmont and maybe the Oakmont parks and rec, if they ever have events and they have booths. Yeah. You they'd share info. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Maybe we could put together a brief, um, at least a, a very basic brochure. Cause it, I mean, some of the stuff, as far as what we're working on, it's changing, you know, every few months, but, um, at least something maybe for the time being we could do, so. Cool. Yay. Oh, yeah, I'll make a note of that. I wonder if like Marin would be a good person to connect with. Yes. Yeah, with the sustainability salon. I don't know what her next like theme is, but. Who, who's that or what? Marin Cook, she was there tonight. She does, well, they used to be in her house before COVID, but now she does them online, the sustainability salon. She's been doing it for years. And she lives kind of in Frick Park. So, I mean, on a street that goes down into Frick Park. And her house is very, well, I think there's like a tree going through the roof of part of it. And um, so she invites people from the environmental community to make different presentations, their mm -hmm. topics and movies, and there's like a potluck. And so um, it's, a, it's a salon, you know, gathering people together. And some, sometimes I, I haven't gone that much, but there can be a lot of people there. There could be like 50 people, you know? Um, so, um, yeah. So she she has yeah. a lot of outreach you're right through those sustainability salons and then um just other <laughs> other ways to to get information out with her blog and and um she has a lot of resources that ways to get it out okay yeah she might be interested in this presentation you know so. yeah let me know if um you know feel free to connect me with her, vice versa. Yeah, I can connect you via email. Okay, thanks.
I was looking up her, um, where it's putting down roots and I don't see anything um, mentioned about what the next one is. I might not just be looking at the right place, but she probably has ones for like transportation and such that this would fit right into. Yeah. Definitely falls into the, the county uh, transportation plan. So mm. that, uh, <clears throat> that seems like a good fit. I don't want to speak for her, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, I certainly don't want to, it, it's, you know, I'm happy to make the connection or go visit a group if, if they want us, if, if it doesn't fit in with, you know, the agenda and stuff, that's totally fine. But, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be looking and we have time. Um, but, you know, just looking for more connections to make with other groups and other, um, community members to, to grow, grow the word about the project so that when there is something that comes up about a community meeting or something else, more people are like, oh yeah, that, you know, I know about that rather than just, uh, oh, what's that? And mm -hmm. that's fine too. But if, if people know about it already, then, you know, maybe they'll be more likely to show up um, rather than just look at it and say, oh, I don't, I don't know anything about that. I, I don't know. I'll skip it. But yeah, yeah in, in Butler County, a few years ago, we did a session, a visioning session with students um, who are working with the Environmental Center at Slippery Rock University. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, their recommendations of things they'd like to see. And one of the things that came up was connecting the different parks in Butler County together and put, like having like a trail that connects them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's interest in that kind of thing, different places and putting, you know, trail, the trail towns, you know, that kind of, you know, hotels and different uh, nature types of exhibits and things along the way. So. Yeah, and that's um, that's actually very similar to what Allegheny County has laid out. Um, I'm gonna put a link to it in the chat, but um, the Allegheny Places Comprehensive Plan, if you go into um, the transportation portion of it called Active Allegheny, or maybe Active Allegheny is a portion of the transportation component, but they really wanna do kind of like what um, I think the city of Pittsburgh is doing in connecting the parks. Yeah. So Allegheny County, I think, wants to try to connect, you know, all the county parks and connect them to also to like community, smaller community parks. So that's really, um, I think, a great part of this that we hope to accomplish with the VOP project is, um, you know, we're definitely going to connect Boyce Park and then, you know, maybe this can be a springboard to connect other parks like uh I don't know, Deer Lakes across the river. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of trail development projects going on in Trenum, Harrison, um, that area, um, up towards Hartwood Acres. Um, so, I, I mean, at the very least, I think there's, there's momentum now to have trail projects going along um, a lot of the Allegheny Valley corridor. So, so yeah, I, th I think that's a great thing. Um, we had the new person just join. <laughs> I, we were just wrapping up, but uh, Trish, did you want to uh, say anything or like why you were interested or? Oh, hey guys. Yes. I'm sorry. I completely got the meeting time wrong, but I just wanted to pop in to say hello. I got the invitation from the lovely Rhea Homa and just wanted to um, catch up and see what you guys were talking about. Obviously, um, you know, love all things green, all things trails, all things just, you know, bridging things together. So yeah, just wanted to, to learn more and, you know, see how I could potentially help. So yeah, thank you. And yeah, David, um, if you ever have like volunteer opportunities or events or something that you want kind of like shared out, you know, feel free to send that kind of stuff to me. Um, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I wish we had some volunteer opportunities because that would probably mean that we were closer to actually having a trail built, but <laughs> Um, when the time comes, I'll definitely, definitely keep it in mind. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, cool. thanks for coming. Yeah, um, and Trish, sorry that you can wait, but um, I will be sending the recording tomorrow. So um, yeah, be on the lookout for that. And Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm gonna head out now. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.